studios. Well, let's get more context now from uh, Professor Peter Kaganja. He is a governance and uh, policy analyst uh, joining us here by way of Zoom. Professor, many, many thanks for your time. Uh, let's talk about the situation in uh, Somalia now threatening not just Somalia's election, but Somalia's entire state building process. Speak to us about, first of all, who is fighting who in this latest gunfight? Uh, I think the the, off the offending uh, force is uh, President uh, Abrahi Famajo. Uh, reason being that he had a whole four years in which to give way for an election, either uh, to confirm him as, you know, uh, for a second term or to allow in a new government. But he decided basically to, to create um, a kind of uh, antagonism, particularly with the federal states, to the point that. Uh, uh, he started manipulating elections for federal states, threatening uh, you know, uh, clans and federal leaders, and that has now culminated in one of the worst constitutional crises since 1991 in that country. Right. And it is basically pushing back a lot of gains that have been made. Many are pointing an accusing finger at uh, President Farmadro, perhaps former president, seeing as his tenure um, ended some time last week. Do you feel that uh, President Farmadro has done everything in his power to ensure that this election does not take place? He does because he has been pushing for an extension of the term by one year. Uh, two, he has appointed committees. He took the wrong counsel from Asmara that uh, because he's sitting on the seat, he should not wake up. In other words, people, I mean, dictators in the region cannot understand how you can subject yourself to an election when you're already in the seat. But he forgot that he himself came to power through an election. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he has done everything in the book to ensure that there is no election uh, now culminating in a, in a constitutional crisis and one of the worst election uh, impasse in Somalia. And given the events that are now unfolding as we speak, but uh, he's very, very uh, slowly pushing Somalia on the brink of you know, civil war. If he, because the moment you start shooting uh, opposition leaders, uh, four opposition leaders have uh, just written uh, that they have just survived, uh, you know, the shooting there, mm -hmm. uh, which is not very good. So he is doing everything basically to declare a state of emergency, uh, impose himself as the dictator of that country, and then start threatening the neighbors like Kenya, Ethiopia, and Djibouti. All right. So let's talk about the possible scenarios now, because the concern here is that Somalia will slide back into chaos. President Farmajo argues that his tenure should be extended until new elections can be held. For the talks governing the rules uh, on the rules governing the elections have since stalled. Um, we have the international community having taken the position of no partial elections and no partial processes in this election. So what are the likely scenarios to get Somalia out of this quagmire? There's no other scenario expect, except uh, allowing Somalia to go to democracy and elect its new government. Because the government in office was mediated by neighbors like Kenya uh, after 30 years or so of chaos. Uh, that government is uh, uh, protected and supported by the United Nations. Uh, it is also supported by partners. And it is existing at the behest of the African Union. Remember. That government is protected by Ugandans and Burundians, and the periphery of that country is defended by Ethiopia, Kenya, and Djibouti, and other forces. Mm -hmm. Meaning, Famaji is just not having it right. He is just missing the point. You cannot declare yourself a dictator in a country that is still working uh, in, in formation. It is, it's work in progress. It is, uh, we don't have, in fact, many people don't even think that we have a government in Mogadishu. But we do, because there must be an authority. But that, this work is in progress. Federal regions are stronger, because that's the way the government was weaved, that we will culminate eventually in Mogadishu, but we have to strengthen the region. Famaggio decided that he's going to create a centristic process, a regime that is ruling from Mogadishu, but he doesn't even have the wither with to basically impose the, 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 the dictatorship of the, of the center in the periphery. Right. Meaning, he thre he's threatening the country, threatening the regions, threatening the neighbors, and the next thing you see is an influx of refugees in Kenya, influx of refugees in Djibouti, influx of refugees in Ethiopia. 
he himself has just come back as a refugee. Mm -hmm. His uncle, his uncle Syed Barre pushed Somalia into, into chaos. He went to America, got a job, got education. Now he has come back to finish the job that his uncle did not finish. Basically pushing Somalia into permanent state of anarchy. Uh, the neighbors are not happy. Uh, the international community is not happy. The world is not happy. Farmajo so need to sit down very quickly and craft a, a, a roadmap into the election uh, with regional leaders, with the candidate, the council pro, uh, presidential uh, candidate, and also with the civil society and clan leaders in Somalia. Right. This must be a process. It, it was expected, though, that you know, with um, you know, an election and a new administration, that Somalia's foreign policy uh, would be reconsidered, that they would mend relations uh, with the neighboring countries and the international community as well. Let's talk about the role of the region and the international community in brokering a deal uh, in uh, Somalia. We've seen diplomatic relations with neighbors like Kenya go south, and now we have unconfirmed reports of cadets possibly having been sent to Eritrea for training um, uh, following uh, as this situation unfolds. Uh, let's have your thoughts on the reports on Eritrea. Now, the problem with Farmajo is he's taking the long classes. He's taking the long lessons. He went to Asmara and uh, he can look north to Ethiopia and seeing a leader who is continuing himself in power out of the constitutional mandate. But at least uh, in Ethiopia, they went to pa parliament and parliament confirmed Abey as Prime Minister Abey uh, to continue until uh, the time they have agreed. In Somalia, he has not done that. To in Asmara, the leader there has been there since 1993. He has never had an election. Doesn't even know what an election is in Eritrea. Now, how can you come and replicate the same in Somalia? Somalia is surviving on the popular will of the Somali people, and therefore an election is inevitable. Somalia cannot be without an election. Therefore. Taking lessons from Asmara, trying to arm, you know, the Somali society and pushing the country back to war in whatever form is lack of wisdom. Because this is a war he can never win. His uncle did not win the war in 1991. He had the government and he had the military. Somalia is a very diffuse society. Five regions plus one, which is Somaliland, which is a part of this. Uh, but the most important thing for Maja need to do now is to call all the leaders and opinion leaders, and he craft, he helped craft a, a kind of a succession, a succession uh, roadmap, leading to the election, formation of a new government, installation of a new government, and that is the one now to agree on putting Somali back on one man, one vote kind of a democracy. Right. Emulating uh, uh, Eritrea is not going to help Somalia. All right, so for Somalia's opposition, uh, we have Farmajo now asking for an extension until another election takes place. But, but for the opposition, any scenario that leaves Farmajo in office seems to be a non-starter. It's not on the table. So the preferred option, according to analysts, seems to have a transitional national council, one that includes the president of the federal member states and members of the opposition who would then oversee the election. Um, and this had been the bone of contention in the beginning. Would a transitional national council work and would it be inclusive in this situation? That is not what uh, Famaggio want. Famaggio want basically to outflank everyone. He want to play uh, the clever one uh, by basically, when, like now he's being pushed the corner because of the ongoing demonstrations. He want to say that he is for peace. Remember there has been three meetings in Samare, three meetings on this constitution. There was one supposed to be one last week which he, he, he again, uh, you know, uh, foiled. The issue here is that you want a one-year extension. The opposition, civil society, regional leaders, and everybody does not want any extension of government because there is no reason for that. There is parliament intact which can elect a new president and, and, that, and that president can appoint a prime minister. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we can, the elections can be held. Farmajo simply want to impose himself as a dictator. One year extension, he then removes all the enemies that he, he has. Then after removing the enemies, he declares himself a dictator for life. Uh, that's what they, they are doing in the region. We, have, we are seeing in the Horn of Africa, the return of 
the dictatorships of the 1990s and 1980s. We are seeing very blatant effort to use military, uh, what we call militarism, rather than dialogue, peace, and negotiations in the region. Uh, for us in Kenya, this is not a good picture because we are moving, moving deeper and deeper into democracy where everybody has a voice. Then you have these neighbors where in the whole country, the only one person has a voice. Right. I think it's not, it's not a situation that is very becoming, either for Somalia or for the region. All right, and of course, a bigger concern is what this would mean geopolitically. What impact would this have on the war on terror, on Al-Shabaab specifically? Obviously, the Al-Shabaab is now emboldened. As you can see, they are attacking with a nilay. They are attacking anywhere. Now, this is going to undermine the war on terror. But the big question is, what is the future of the African uh, mission in Somalia, Amisom, uh, in which Kenya is part of? The Amisom mandate is to ensure that there is a government that is democratically elected in this country, in that country. I would, Im I would imagine my recommendation would be the African Union by now should be sitting and discussing the future of, 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 of democracy in Somalia. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot protect a dictatorship. That, that's, not, that's not why the United Nations uh, is paying. That's why Kenyans, Ethiopians, and others are losing their lives in Somalia in order to sustain a dictator. The issue is... So, I mean, if I just should go like yesterday, it shouldn't even be there. And I think the Speaker of Parliament, according to the Constitution, should be the one who having the interim. Then you can talk about the transition authority. A transition authority can, it should not be, you know, in the place of a roadmap to an election. The election in Somalia is very, very simple. Put the committees together, let the committees elect the members of Parliament, let the members of parliament elect uh, you know, the president. Famadio has gone through that process. He knows how it is done. I cannot understand why he should hang into power for no apparent reason, uh, right. except emulating the two leaders with whom he is in a coalition. That is in Ethiopia, uh, in, in Asmara. Now, if you look at Ethiopia in Tigray, uh, nobody is happy about those situations. 100,000 refugees All now right. in Sudan. All Sudan right. is suffering. Sooner or later, you are going to see refugees beginning to flow into our region, mm -hmm. particularly Kenya. We now have about 250,000 Somali refugees in that dry place called Dadaab, mm -hmm. with, no, with, with su surviving on international support. We need to prevent more influx of refugees. All right. Professor Peter Kaganja, though, is a governance and a policy analyst, giving us his view on the unfolding situation in Somalia. Professor, many thanks for your time. Manolo, former Niger president.